happy Tuesday, everyone. I hope that you had a great weekend. I had an extra special weekend because my great granddaughter was born this weekend. We are very, very excited. She's beautiful and you know me, I love babies, so yay. Um, so tomorrow is our final hurdle. Um, the guide team meets around 8.30, I think. So more than likely before noon, there will be an announcement saying, yes, we are opening. That's at least my hope. So stay tuned and don't forget about the Zoom meetings on Thursday so that you can go over any questions you have from the documentation I put up on the website. If you did not get an email about the Zoom meetings, go on to our website and the information is there under the coronavirus update, okay? Now to the kids. Hi guys, I'm gonna read you a story about pirates. It says, pirates don't change diapers. Hmm. Do you remember last week, I think it was, we read about Jeremy Jacob and how he became a pirate? Well, this is his story again, but this is a little different. Let's make sure I've got it right, I do. Pirates don't change diapers. They don't even change socks. I know because I used to be a pirate, but that's another story. Today, while I was wondering what to buy my mother for her birthday with the 27 cents in my pocket, mom came into the room. Jeremy Jacob, she said, I have to get some milk. Your dad's taking a nap, so try not to bother him. As she went out the door, she called. If your sister wakes up, try to keep her happy. I'll be back soon. Oh, great, I thought. Keeping that baby happy is never easy. Mom had hardly been gone a minute when I heard a knock on the door. I peeked through the peephole. Ooh, what do you think that's a picture of? There were some old friends on the front porch. Ahoy, Jeremy Jacob. Are we ever glad to see you, said Captain Braidbeard. We've run into a boatload of trouble. Our ship ran aground on a coral reef. The bow broke open and our figurehead's nose tore right off. I had it carved special to look just like me blessed mother too. I is mother, the crew chorused. It'll have to be replaced and that'll cost us a pretty penny, Braidbeard said. We be needing the treasure we buried in your backyard. Treasure, the pirates repeated. With all that yelling, my baby sister woke up. It's a miracle my dad didn't wake up too. Arrgh, hollowed gray beard. What be that caterwauling? That's Bonnie Ann, I said, and I'm supposed to keep her quiet. You'll have to help me babysit. Babysit, gray beard scratched his head. Pirates don't sit on babies. No sitting on babies, hollered the crew. But there was no way we'd be digging up the treasure, I told them, until Bonnie Ann was happy again. That's how the pirates became babysitters. Ha! Ah, he's pulling on his beard. Bonnie Ann always has her diaper changed after her nap, but the pirates needed a lot of practice. Things got really interesting when we ran out of diapers. Look at, look how the diaper's there and on his hook and his head. Oh my, they need some help. They need a girl pirate to help them. Then it was Bonnie Ann's lunchtime, and when she gets hungry, everybody knows it. Braidbeard sniffed the baby food. Shiver me timbers, he yelled. What be in this vile smell and swill? Strange spinach, I told him. Strange spinach, Braidbeard said. A bilgerat wouldn't eat this stuff. Then Bonnie Ann sneezed. I got out of the way just in time. Arg! strange spinach, wailed the pirates. She sneezed on him. When Bonnie Ann was finally changed and fed, we thought we'd be able to get outside. But every time we tried to sneak away, the baby got fussing again. She does that a lot. Now, what does the wee boutonier want? Bra um, Braidbeard demanded. Maybe you should rock her, I said. Aye, then, bellowed Braidbeard. Rock on, me hearties. Rock on, cheered the cr crew. Not that kind of rock, I groaned, using the rocking chair. See how he's got his 
He's not holding her very well, though, is he? When rocking didn't work, we tried pirate peekaboo. We danced a pirate jig. We sang sea chanties. Look, I whispered, she's falling asleep again. Quick, let's dig up the treasure now. Time to dig, laddies, Captain commanded Greenbeard. Shh, I said, not so loud. Not so loud, roared the pirates. I don't think they get the concept of being quiet for the baby. Bonnie Ann caterwauled until we found the only person who could keep her quiet. Quicker than you can say scurvy dog, we headed out the door and out the door to get the treasure. The map, said Bray Baird. Hand over the map. The map? Everybody emptied their pockets. No luck. The wee lass, she must have it, Bray Beard hollered, and we all ran for the house. But the map wasn't there. Neither was Bonnie Ann. The map, cried Bray Beard. The treasure, boomed the crew. The baby, I yelled louder than anyone. After all, she is my sister, and I was getting really worried. We searched all over the house, then ran back outside. We stopped so fast we were almost pirate pancakes. There was Bonnie Ann, and she had the map. Avast, yelled Red. The wee lass has eaten it. Now we'll never be able to fix the ship. We're marooned, marooned, mourned the others. Maybe not, I said. Thanks to my little sister, I think I know exactly where to dig. Well, with all of us digging, we found the treasure in no time. Brave Beard opened the chest and grinned. Choose your reward, Jeremy Jacob. You've earned your fair share. It didn't take me long to decide. Green is my mom's favorite color. If you need a babysitter again, maybe, Braid Beard said, you know how to find us. Just run the Jolly Roger up yonder pole. Up yonder pole, I shouted. As the pirates headed back to their ship, Bonnie Ann and I ran straight for the house. We had a birthday present to wrap. Isn't that cool? I love that story. Crazy pirates with poor Bonnie Ann. Well, listen, everybody, again, we're counting down less than 24 hours. We'll know for sure if we can open on Monday. And I'm so excited to see all the kids. And so is the staff. They're thrilled. So you have a great night and plan on hearing from me tomorrow sometime. Good night.